this is a video of a live scan of endometriosis in a patient showing deep endometriosis in the lower and upper rectum and the sigmoid colon. My name is Suzanne Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. The International Deep Endometriosis Analysis Group, the IDEA group, published this paper in 2016, giving us a systematic approach to the sonographic evaluation of the pelvis in patients with suspected endometriosis. This has given us a system where we use a systematic routine pelvic ultrasound first, looking for features of endometriosis, then looking for the sliding sign in the pouch of Douglas, nodules of deep endometriosis and soft markers of site-specific tenderness and pelvic mobility. As I go through the scan, I build up a report in my head looking for features of endometriosis, whether the uterus is maybe antiverted and retroflexed, if there's adenomyosis, if there are ovarian endometriomas and whether the ovaries are kissing or not, if there's retrocervical deep endometriosis at the torus and uterosacral ligaments, which can be attached to and or involving the posterior vaginal fornix and bowel, whether there are any other bowel nodules, frozen pelvis, and looking at the bladder, the lower ureters and the kidneys. And I, my suggestion is that you break it up when the scan is complicated, break it up into small pieces, into small steps. Always remember to be very gentle with the transvaginal ultrasound. Be systematic, more or less the same order every time, then you can't forget any one element. And when you find something, think what is it and where is it? In small areas, break it up into torus, uterosacral ligaments, bowel and vagina. This patient is 44 and she was known to have endometriosis. She was then admitted whilst abroad as an emergency and had a large pelvic abscess. She underwent an emergency laparotomy with bilateral salpingo oophorectomy and appendicectomy, but we had no other details. Um, she came to see us six months later and she was asymptomatic on tibolone hormone replacement therapy. When I scanned her, I could see the following. And the point of this video is we'll do the scan as though we're doing it together. The first view is a longitudinal view of the uterus and uh, as you insert the probe you can see the uterus but then moving the probe slightly more uh, posteriorly you can immediately see this large plaque of bowel endometriosis. But even though it's already really obvious try and stay systematic and first let's look at the uterus and it's antiverted, it's antiverted and antiflexed um, and there is there's some posterior thickening here and some features of minor diffuse adenomyosis. Looking in the transverse plane, the uterus is a normal shape, which I judge by the uh, shape of the endometrial cavity. More of that in the 3D lecture. And then looking at the endometrium, at the endometrial thickness, and of course I will have had better views throughout, but this is where I'm measuring the endometrium. It's nice and thin on her HRT. And here there was a small submucosal fibroid. Even though I knew she'd had a, a BSO, I still look for the ovaries and I look in the longitudinal view because that shows you the iliac vessels and on, in both at Nexi you can see there's no ovary. Now I'm going to look at the torus. So first of all, this is the longitudinal view of the uterus. Here is the cervix. This is where the bladder attaches to the uterus, internal os, and the torus is at the back there in a straight line. And this is where the uterosacral ligaments attach to the uterus. And you can see that's where this large dark area is that we saw immediately before. So the uterus is up there somewhere with the endometrial cavity. To look at the torus, I'm now going to rotate my probe 90 degrees anti-clockwise and that gets me to this point here and I can see that the abnormality behind the torus is mainly on the right hand side of the pelvis, just there. So I can see the torus is abnormal, so what is it? I need to break it up into ligaments, bowel and vagina. First of all, we're going to look at the, at the uterus again. I'm still in the anterior fornix, and here you can see the external os, the cervical canal, the internal os in a line with where the bladder attaches, and the endometrial cavity. So it's the anterior wall, fundus posterior. And you can see here that the ligaments behind the cervix are very, very thick and white. So there's the torus and thick white ligaments. 
Now I need to look in that area in more detail to look to see if I can find any deep endometriosis. So looking again at that area, I can see that there is a, a tiny little bit of darkness there. That's some deep endometriosis. And if I now scan side to side in the longitudinal plane, I can see some more endometriosis just there. I'll just do that again. You've got the bowel plaque there and there you've got more deep endometriosis in the ligaments behind the cervix. Just going side to side in the longitudinal plane. So the ligaments are thick, fibrotic with some deep endometriosis. So is the bowel involved? So to see that we need to angle back a bit, back posteriorly, always stay gentle and remind the patient to let her knees go floppy. And when you angle back a bit, you can see some normal um, muscularis layer here, very low down, the darkest of vagina, the whitest ligaments, and this is the muscularis layer. So it's normal to here. And then you can see that this thickens out. This is um, abnormal muscularis. And if we look at that on a little video, you can see normal muscularis there. Here it becomes abnormal. And all of this is abnormal, halfway up to the back of the uterus. So we're angling back, looking to see how the normal muscularis becomes thick and abnormal. And then at this point, we would see it becoming thin and normal again, but not in this particular clip. And if it's difficult to see, you're better off to go into the posterior fornix. In this view, I had good views through the anterior fornix. I didn't need to do it, but I will have done it at some point. So thinking just about the bowel now, um, we need to measure this. So you need to when it bends like that you need to follow the bend otherwise you would foreshorten the abnormal length and then go for the depth measuring only the muscularis layer don't include things of the ligaments just go for the muscularis and there's the width and there is the diameter of the bowel so you can see that that uh, covers the entire surface of the bowel so half of the circumference um, and there's some submucosal involvement if you it's not very clear in this image but um, I'll show that in a different uh, image and the, the, the bowel angle this is more than 90 degrees. So if we think about if this bowel module is stenosing or not, uh, it's not more than 10 millimeters in depth. It does cover half of the circumference and it doesn't um, retract the bowel into an angle of less than 90 degrees. So I think this is less likely to be a stenosing lesion. And when the DE is as linear as that, I tend to call it a plaque rather than a nodule because it describes it better, I think. And if you want some more detail, this is a, a book I can highly recommend. And that's where I got these surrogate markers for bowel stenosis from. So we know what it is. So where is it? Um, looking again at the, at the uterus, this bowel lesion, how will I describe where it is? Again, I'm going to draw the torus and you can see that the abnormal plaque extends on both sides of the torus. Now the bowel above this line is called the upper rectum and below it it's called the lower rectum. And in the transverse plane it's such a useful plane to uh, look better at what the relationship between different uh, tissues is and you can see it's mainly on the right in the transverse plane. We still haven't looked at whether the vagina is involved and so here I am looking specifically if the vagina is involved. I'm inserting the probe very gently and even though I've stayed in the anterior fornix I can see that where the vagina attaches to the back of the cervix all of this is normal and there's no vaginal nodule but I will have put the probe in the posterior fornix to double check that because the views are much better. So if you put that together, staying in the longitudinal plane, sweeping from side to side, uh, we're going to look at normal muscularis coming in there, then looking at this large bowel plaque attached to the back of the uterus, thick ligaments with deep endometriosis. And to do the um, sliding sign, you just very gently press in and out. It shouldn't hurt. You have to be very, very gentle. You can see nothing moved together at all. Uh, separate it was all moves as a block I'll show you again now you can see the bowel plaque and now the sliding sign all of this moves together on block so this is a frozen pelvis 
And then at the end of the scan, when you've done your systematic scan, you need to look around for site-specific tenderness very, very gently. And as you go around the pelvis, pressing on individual organs, um, saying, you know, is, is this sore at all? You can also judge mobility straight away. And while I was doing that, looking high in the left adnexa, um, I could see this hypoechoic nodule there. So here's a video clip of that area. And what you can see is you can just see the edge of the bladder. You can see that this is entirely separate. This is in the bowel wall and you can see crazy amount of peristalsis around it. And you can see the white, you can just see the white mucosa and submucosa overlying this nodule. It's maybe more easy to see in the next image in a still. So this is a very high lesion. It's a sigmoid nodule with very active peristalsis. And here's some stills of it. So here you can see a hypoechoic nodule. And this white layer that you can see overlying it is the submucosa um, of the, the bowel. So this is the anterior bowel wall, um, high up left, so it's sigmoid. Um, and you can see that this is a nodule of deep endometriosis. It's not adherent to the bladder and measure it in two planes. If you look at the angle that the bowel makes, it is very retracted. So is it also stenosing? It's not more than 10 millimeters in depth. Um, it does cover half the circumference and it made a very acute angle. So I think this is quite likely to be a stenosing lesion, especially bearing in mind we saw this very overactive peristalsis. And then last but not least, you need to check the bladder, the ureters and the kidney. I'll do that in a, in a different uh, video. And obviously the kidney views are done transabdominally. So my conclusion of this scan was that there was a normal anterior compartment, minor adenomyosis and absent ovaries. That the uterosacral ligaments are very thick with some deep endometriosis. The posterior vaginal fornix is normal. There was a large rectal plaque of deep endometriosis extending from the lower to the upper rectum, which does not appear to be stenosing, and a small nodule of deep endometriosis in the sigmoid colon, more likely to be stenosing, with a frozen pelvis. Uh, for more detail on how to diagnose endometriosis on ultrasound, there's a video on the website. Thank you.